Hello friends, happy Monday. Hope your day is going great so far. Um, yes, I feel like we were still in like holiday, um, what you call it, mood last week. <laughs> uh, but this week is like the very first week. People are going back to school, work, all that. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Um, today I'm not doing verse, the verse of the day technically. I might include it because I feel like it goes with what we're going to talk about. But um, today is going to be, yeah, just sharing with you guys um, a few things that the Lord spoke to me through my quiet time this morning. So let's get to it. Um, as you guys know, uh, if you've been following me for a while, I did uh, the Proverbs of the day. And um, I tell you guys, I feel like all the time that, um, yeah, obviously Proverbs in the Bible is the book of wisdom. So um, I started this last year and it stuck with me the whole 2018. I'm continuing on as far as I can um, to continue reading the Proverbs of the day. And what does that mean? It means um, Proverbs has 31 chapters. And usually we have obviously 30 to 31 days in the month. So for example, today is the 7th. So when I, re I read uh, Proverbs 7. Um, so I read through it and the Proverbs is about, um, the title is Warning Against the Adulteress. Okay. Um, and it talks about, yes, how... Um, yeah, there's this foolish, uh, simple-minded man who gets tricked by this um, this adulterous woman and they have an affair. And um, neither one of them, um, well, they're not married to each other. She's married to somebody else. I'm not sure if he's married to somebody, but she's already taken. She's already married, but she like lures this um, this guy in and she and end up having an affair. Um, but what I think is so interesting is that, um, what Solomon does, but ultimately God, obviously what he does is the first three chapters talk about, you know, warnings and how not to get to this point. Okay. And the first three chapter, first three verses in chapter seven, that talk about, you know, the commandments of God. So I'm going to read them and then we'll discuss them. So again, chapter seven in the book of Proverbs, um, verses one, two, and three, it says, my son keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. It says my son, um, obviously, you know, uh, Solomon is writing this, but even though it's a son, we can totally flip it and see like, this is for us too, for like women. This is totally, could totally apply, uh, apply to us. So it says my son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your, of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablets of your heart. So what we're talking about right now here is the commandments. And um, this even is essentially God speaking to us and warning us about, you know, yes, the adulteress, because that's what it talks about continuing on in the chapter. But this is something that we can apply to so many things, you know, and um, the go against what God wants us to do. And the beginning of that, you know, is really... Uh, clinging to the commandments, clinging into God's commandments. And we're going to see why that's so important. Um, why it is, you know, that even when I read through um, even the Psalms, you know, like David says, you know, your commands are sweet to my lips. Like your commands, you know, bring me life. I delight in your commands. And I feel like that goes even just against what even what we're taught because commandments, if anything, are rule, right? The rules are things that we should or we should not do. And it has such a bad connotation, like, don't tell me what I can't do. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. Um, but there is beauty in that. And there's beauty in that because God is the one who says it. And there's beauty in that because um, obviously God knows best. And God is the creator and he's our father. And um, again, this is to people who honestly are uh, Christ followers, who have put all their hope in Jesus and want to live a life that honors him. Um, so yes, if we don't want to be doing things that are foolish, things that are going to, number one, dishonor God, and number two, hurt us, that's the beginning. It says, you know, keep my word and treasure up my commands with you. I love how it says treasure, like we have to, um, um, yeah, hold it like so valuable that um, it's like a, like a treasure for us, you know. Um, I don't know about you, but I am like, a, how do I say it? I, I love schedules. I love, not that I love rules, but I love knowing what's expected of me. Okay. I don't like figuring out 
I like, you know, you telling me, hey, I expect this and this and when I'm giving an assignment, etc. I'm like, give me the details. I need to know what it is that I'm supposed to do. I love that, you know, and um, in essence, that's what God's saying. The reason why it's such a treasure is because now in life, we know what's expected of us. You know, we weren't just created and thrown in this world and figure out your own morals, figure out your own rules. No, God says, I created you and I have, um, I have commands, I have rules, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and that is right there is a gift because we don't have to start figuring out and like kind of scratching our heads and saying, God, what do you want? Do you want me to, you know, hurt myself? Do you want me to do sacrifices? Do you want me to? No, God's saying, these are my commands. This is the way to my heart. This is a way that you can please me. And that's so loving because we don't have to guess. There's no guesswork, you know? Um, this is what you to, I want you to do to show love to me. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Keep my words and treasure my commands with you. Keep my commandments and live. So we know how to live. If we follow God's commandments and, com God, and God's commandments are found throughout the scripture, starting with the Ten Commandments, you know, um, one of which is broken in this whole chapter because it's talking about the adulterous woman. And one of the commandments is do not covet, you know, what somebody else has. And this woman was married and this guy had an affair with this woman who was married. So right there is breaking a commandment, you know. Um, if he wouldn't, if he would have treasured God's commandments, then he wouldn't have, you know, fallen into this um uh yeah this thing of adulteress and the uh, adulterous woman and having an uh, having an affair and at the end of this chapter i love how it says you know that this man really does not understand what he's getting himself into because at the end this adultery is going to cost him his life that's what it says and so god is trying to spare a life god's trying to show love and saying this is how you are to love me this is how you are to please me so again um once we understand that now we can really live we can live the way that we are supposed to in god's eyes knowing these commands knowing our boundaries um it's like for example i don't know going into like a field right and um there are mines all over this field and um, what God has done is he's like, I'm going to put a barrier so that you don't know, go into those, uh, you know, those mines. I mean, the, yeah, where those, those uh, mines are. So now you can live and now you can run around the field and do whatever you want because of the borders, because of the fencing, because of the hedges are right around, you know, where you're allowed to. Now you can live. Now you can run around, you know what I'm saying, in this beautiful, you know, pasture because you know that there's fenced in and you're not going to go into those mines. Well, that's what, that's what commands are. Now you can live because you know where you can stop. Excuse me, you know where your boundaries are. So now you can really enjoy life without saying, well, I'm not sure if I go this way because I have no boundaries and maybe there's a mine there. Maybe I can get hurt. God says, I don't want you to get hurt. So stick to those boundaries. And that's what his commandments are. And then it keeps saying, keep, keep my teachings as the apple of your eye. And something that's in the apple of our eye is something that we treasure, that we love, that we hold dear, that has so much value, probably over anything, you know. And for us, a lot of times as parents, as our children, though they are the apple of our eye. Like everything we do is to please them, that's good for them. You know what I'm saying? We keep them in mind. They're like the apple of our eye. And that's what he said. God's teachings should be the apple of our eye. And three, it says, bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. I love it says, bind them on your fingers because fingers, I feel like it's something, obviously, you look at every single day. I look at my fingers every day. I work with my fingers, something that I'm continually seeing. Um, so that's, she's like, bind them in your fingers, meaning somewhere where you're continually seeing, you should have my commands there. Um, obviously, you know, don't write them out and wrap them around your fingers, but in essence, put them somewhere, but put them somewhere where you can see them exposed, be exposed to them every single day so you can be reminded of them. It says, write them on the tablet of your heart. Things that we hold dear to us are in our heart, right? Things that we love, that we cherish are in our heart. So again, you know what I'm saying? Put these commands in our heart. Um, and I was reading through this and I'm like, okay, we are obviously not perfect. We are sinful. So for God to say, follow my commands. I was even just like kind of scratching my head like, okay, God, you want me to follow your commands, but I'm going to fail. Like I'm not going to be able to, to follow these, you know, all, all the time. And I was reminded of a verse that I read, read in, in the book of Romans a while ago that really stuck out to me. And I think we could totally apply it. Okay. It's Romans 5 20. And it says, now the law came, the law meaning the commands, 
they came in to increase the trespass. But where sin increase, grace abounds all the more. So even that of the law and commands were given to us. So our, our sin can increase. That's what it's saying here. And you can read that and you can say, what? Um, and reading this, when I see myself against the commands, things that I should be doing, I understand even more that I can follow them. And my sin increases in that I am more aware of how sinful I am. If I look at the commands and things that I should be doing, and I know that I'm sinful, and I'm like, I don't compare to that, I'm more aware. I'm saying, wow, I really am sinful, right? And the reason why God wants us to dwell in them is so our, our knowledge and understanding of how sinful we are increases. And according to this verse, it says, uh, grace abounds, okay, but where sin increase, grace abounds even more. When I'm made aware of how sinful I am, you know, and my sin is increased by looking at the commands which I'm supposed to be holding in my heart, um, I can understand and I can appreciate grace even more, okay? I can say, wow, God, I am sinful. Every time I look at the commandments, I see that my increase inside me, my sin increases because I'm not perfect, but wow, can I, I get closer to you because I delight more in your grace. The more I'm more aware of my sin because of the commands, the more grace grows and abounds even more. And that brings us me even more closer to Jesus, understanding his grace and understanding his love. So I think that this verse goes very well, even with, um, yeah, the first three verses in chapter seven in the book of Proverbs. So... Yeah, guys, that's about it. Um, if you are watching this on Instagram, this video will be up for the next 24 hours. If you're watching this on Facebook, it will be up as a post. And if you're watching this on YouTube, because I am trying my best to upload it there as well, it'll be there forever. All right. So have an amazing day. Love you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow.